welcome to the second episode of Paul and All. Uh, and as we know, sequels often don't live up to the original. There are some exceptions to that rule, but that tends to be the case. So I apologize in advance for what will be probably not the best podcast, but what I wanted was to get a few of these out of the way, just me, because uh, more often than not, I probably won't be able to find people to talk to, or people that, you know, they're, they're too busy, or whatever, so chances are I will be talking to you all myself, because of course, if and, well, I'm sorry, not if, when, 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 I'm going to be positive about this, but when they finally get published, and of course they already are if you're listening to this, but when they finally get published, I want to have it consistently, you know, week to week basis. So there may be times where it's just me rambling on and on and on, and in advance I apologize for that. Don't really have much to say today. Um, uh, two things that have been on my mind uh, recently, though. Uh, one of them is music. Um, I don't know what you all are into musically. Everybody's different, and and I, I particularly I'm a fan of pretty much everything. I often joke that you know uh, I often joke that pretty much anything but opera for me. Um, my local area, of course, it's everybody. Uh, it's uh, you know usually it's anything but country or country but nothing else because. There's very, it's very divided on country music in, in my area. And it's, it's very weird to, to see the people. And of course, I don't mind country. I don't mind hip hop or, or rap or whatever you want to call it. I don't mind, uh, I always say the Beatles are my favorite band. I'm actually named after one of them. Uh, did I forget to introduce myself, by the way? Sorry about that. I'm your host, J. Paul Casey. Uh, see, I told you, definitely not going to live up to the first episode. But anyway, um, I can listen to country. I can listen to hip-hop or rap or whatever you want to call it. I can listen to um, some, not all, but some um, metal, some hard rock uh, I can listen to some techno here and there. It's, it's, it's very odd. Recently, I said to one of my cousins how, uh, and it's a sentence that I don't think I've ever heard anyone else in the world say, but uh, because of the music that plays at my job for money, and that's what I call it, is my job for money, because that's basically what it is. Um, because of the music there and because it's the same we, we always joke that it's the same 20 songs over and over again. And, and it is, it's the same songs over and over again every single day. So I really do start to learn almost all the words or what I think are the words. And I just mumble a lot of them. And there's actually one of our, one of our guys who works with me. Uh, or I work with him or we work. I don't know how you want to word that because I don't want to sound too full of myself. But... Uh, it's funny because almost every week, because he only works two days a week, and almost every week when he comes in, it's a joke that I'm more often than not singing one of the songs, that whatever song happens to be playing. And, and he jokes now that it, it's, it doesn't feel like he's arrived at work until I'm there serenading him. So uh, I always get a chuckle out of that. But one of, the, one of the bands that consistently plays multiple songs, and I've been really getting into them lately, is ABBA. And now, I, I know what you're thinking. You may be thinking, as I said earlier, never heard a person say, I'm really getting into ABBA lately. But I, I have been. I, I don't know what it is. Waterloo, Take a Chance on Me, Fernando, all of those, they're, 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 it's, I don't know why. It's just so kind of upbeat and, and I, I don't know. It's just, it, it gives me like a good, a good feeling. As odd as that sounds, you know, and and it's nice to have have a good feeling sometimes, you know. Not all you don't always want to listen to depressing music, and there's there's this old uh, thing that I that I used to see where it was like, you know, when you're when you're sad, you listen to the was it when you're sad, you listen to the lyrics. When you're happy, you listen to the music. And I've actually found that to be true, 
because a lot of the, the uh, music that I like, sometimes I will be listening and I'll go, man, the drums sound really good, or oh, the, the, listen to that guitar solo or whatever. But then there are other times where it's like, wow, these lyrics are, are very very ringing they're ringing very true to what i'm going through right now or wow the person obviously was was inspired when they when they wrote this and music for as much as i i talked in the the previous episode about how wrestling uh played a, a large influence on me or an influence that i didn't even realize until years later um i could also argue that music has played just as big maybe even a bigger influence uh in my life overall uh, I relate to a lot of people through the music that that we both like. That I, there are friends that I have just in general, and one of the only things that we talk about is music. That's that we that's that is our friendship is over music. Um, there's other people who we clash completely on music. There's other people who it's not the music so much as the history behind the music, the history behind the bands, just kind of the, the evolution of the musical recording process from, you know, what, what the Beatles did, what Pink Floyd did, what Led Zeppelin did, what the Beach Boys did, uh, you know, all the way up until today, what Dr. Dre does and, and, you know, uh, acts and, and musicians like that, where there's just so much in the evolutionary process of music that it's there's a lot of things there that are just very interesting to me and one of the things actually there's a, a particular story I'm I've been working on for I would say about a year and a half maybe two years by this point maybe even longer if you want to really go back into the history which one day I will but uh, I don't want to I don't want to get too much into the story but uh, a lot of it's a, a television series. The concept is a television series. Some of you who are uh, listeners may have already gotten the chance to read some of it because I do send some of my stuff out to my friends, and hopefully my friends are listening. Um, but uh, one of the things that, that inspired me and, and is has been something of a driving factor within the, the show and within the writing not only like there's of course there's a, a TV you know a few TV shows and, and things like that that have been very uh, influential but one of the things was um, the Meatloaf Jim Steinman uh, collaborations the Bad Out of Hell albums absolutely hands down uh, th- the three of them the, the the three Bad Out of Hells and, and pretty much anything that the two of them or really anything that Jim Steinman has has created has been huge influence on me I would absolutely rank it within the, the, the upper echelon of music. Because what has been done by Jim Steinman and Meatloaf when he's performing those songs, it's just, it, it, takes, it takes music to another level, in my opinion. You know? And it's, it's very odd, especially when, when there's someone who hasn't listened to them before or who, who got me, like my, my mother and, and a few other family members kind of got me into it. And I just, I know that it's going to sound incredibly selfish, but I think I might have a, a and I don't want to say a better, I have a different appreciation for it. Because I was talking with with someone uh, once about Meatloaf, and they said that, you know, the, the Meatloaf, they, they were good songs to play because you... I'm paraphrasing, but, you know, uh, you can get laid to them. Because they are very, a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them are, are very uh, uh, sexual in nature. And isn't that, <laughs> not always, of course, not always, not every genre or whatever, but a lot of times, isn't that what a lot of music and a lot of art and, and creativity and all of that comes down to? There's always some reason, you know? There is, uh, it's whether... For me, and and I, I know other people, a lot of things, and it's uh, it's incredibly, um, I don't want to say difficult for me to say, and as I talked about the, I think I believe I talked about it the last time, where sometimes things are uh, thoughts and and things are are hard for me to formulate on the spot. That's why I love to write because I can take the time to craft all of the correct words and, and phrases that I want. So when I'm just talking like this, especially when I don't have someone to play off of, 
uh, things become a bit jumbled, and I, I do apologize for that. But, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the reasons, and it, part of it is because I do have something to say, obviously, or as I said previously, it's something that I want to see or I want to hear or whatever, but one of the reasons that I write and that I, I am creative, it's one of the reasons that I like to consider myself a funny person is because I want people to like me. And that is a giant character flaw that I have is that I want, well, I've often said that I need, there's something deep inside me that needs everyone to like me. And I know that there are people out there that don't like me and that crushes me. It really does. It is so difficult for me when you have that about yourself where you have the, the need or the, the desire or the want for people to like you. And then to know that there are those who don't, it's incredibly difficult. But that is one of the reasons that I, that I write and that I try to be funny and, and all of those things is because I, there, I don't know what it is, but something, I would assume it was something that happened when I was a child that I told a joke or I told a story and people reacted in a positive way and I liked that feeling. And I, I that made me want to keep doing it that made me need to keep doing it because people like me or people need me if I am the one supplying them I am wow it sounds like a drug I that's not what it is at all um but uh that's that's what it is for me for some people it's it's the need uh I don't remember where I was going with that for some people it's the need for humor for some people there's just there's so many different for some people it's you know uh uh i remembered halfway through that sentence it for some people it's they want to do this because they want to get laid or they want you know so and so to recognize them or they want you know they want to become famous or whatever and a lot of times you can tell the people that put the real effort into it and you can tell the people that are just doing it because they think that it'll bring them fame and fortune and notoriety and whatever. You could tell a lot of times the, the I don't want to say true artists because art is subjective and I am nowhere near qualified enough to tell anyone else what that what they do is not real art. I'm not, it, and and no one. You cannot. I don't care whether you're you're a professional art critic. I don't care whether you're you know the 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 most the the most acclaimed filmmaker. I don't care if you're the the highest selling recording artist. You, don't ever tell anyone that that something that they did, art that they made. To tell them that it's not worth it or to tell them that it's not good enough or that it's not good in general. No one should ever tell someone that what they did, what they tried at, wasn't good. You know, and it comes back to a whole thing. And it's an issue I have with pretty much anything in life where if you have to revert to name calling and, and putting someone else down... That's to me that speaks volumes about you as a person. Because it's so easy to tear someone down. It's so easy to say you're stupid, you don't know what you're doing, you suck. It's so easy. But it's so much more rewarding if you build someone up. You know? And what have you done? If you think that what I do, if you think that this podcast sucks, go make your own podcast. Go make a web series. Go do anything. But you're going to tell me that what I'm doing isn't good? You're going to tell me that it's not worth my time because I have two listeners? I love those two listeners. I don't care. I don't do, I'm, as much as I need people to like me or I want people to like me, for me, it's a creative outlet. There are, there are things that I've written that no one has ever read. There are things that I've written that I barely even go back and reread. There's, 
there are things that I've written that people have hated. I'm sorry if there's any background noise, people. The apartment next to mine, they're vacuuming. The window is open. There's motorcycles out. It's the last good, probably the last good uh, time of the year. Currently, the day of this recording is Star Trek Day, the 50th anniversary of Star Trek premiering. Star Trek, of course, uh, as I said in the previous uh, episode, was a show that I tried doing a podcast about, but unfortunately, we weren't able to continue. One day, hopefully. Um, actually, there you go. That kind of wraps back around to the to the beginning with the whole sequels better than the original because Wrath of Khan definitely better than the motion Star Trek the motion picture. And uh, you know, it's funny on on Facebook today they had you know th- little little just little things to celebrate. And one of my friends who is a very big uh, Star Wars fan put the little angry reaction thing to when I changed my profile picture to something regarding uh, Star Trek. And it's a, it's a joke back and forth between the two of us. You know, sh- she likes Star Wars, I like Star Trek, and, you know, I, not that I have anything against Star Wars, it's just I, I'm not, a, not the biggest fan. I can know about it, I, or I, I'm sorry, I do know about it, I can talk about it, but there's just a lot of uh, things in it that, that bother me and that, that I'm not necessarily that big a fan of. I, I do tend to like Star Trek a lot more, but uh, you know, as much as that's you know that's a perfect example. She and I we talk and we we joke back and forth, and we know that it's all in good fun. But she never turns and says, "Well, it's stupid. Oh, it's too much talking. Those guys are idiots. The writers don't know what they're doing," because she's more mature than that. Because she's better educated than that. And I really don't want this to sound like I'm talking down to anyone. But I'm just so sick of all of the negativity when it comes to creativity and when it comes to expressing things. If someone doesn't know something, I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's someone uh, I don't care if it's a writer. I don't care if it's a politician. If they don't know, you know, a, a recent example was um, one of the, the presidential uh, candidates didn't know where someone, where, where uh, something was in, in Syria. And someone that I know who doesn't like this particular candidate said, well, the guy's stupid. What do you want me to do? I don't like him. He's stupid. Because... That's okay to say. It's okay to say this person's stupid. Not, hey, maybe he goofed up. Hey, maybe he should learn before he's trying to run for a particular office. But it's just, well, that guy's stupid. And then, of course, it turned into, well, my person would tell you to shut up and and do whatever and blah, 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 blah. And then it went off. Actually, it didn't go off because... Based on past experiences, I have learned to hold my tongue because politics is one of the ways in which I lost some friends. I'm not going to get into that, though. But I learned to hold my tongue because not every opinion you have needs to be said out loud. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's so difficult when people just try to, there are just, it. It's all full of, it's all negative. Negative, negative, negative. You can't do this. You shouldn't do that. That's stupid. Why would you do this? Why why not ask why not? Yeah, I want to do this podcast. Why? Who's going to listen to you talk? Probably no one, but I'm still going to do it anyway. I want to do this podcast. Why not, Paul? You like to talk so much anyway. Why not get a lot of these conversations down? Even the conversations you have with yourself. You always say, oh, you could have a better conversation with yourself than you can with some of the people at your job for money. Why not get them down? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? That's the question you need to ask yourself more. That's the question we need to ask each other more, I think. Why not? I want to do this. Why not? Unless it's like, I want to... Murder a family. Don't say why not. <laughs> not to something like that. Sorry, that was a, a horrible example. But if someone's like, you know, I want to study this in college. 
I want to study mime. Why not? Instead of asking, why? That's stupid. Mimes suck. Ask why not. Why not study mime? Mime would be cool. Maybe it's not my thing, but obviously people out there like it. So ask why not. It's just so frustrating. I'm not quite sure what to, what to keep talking about because uh, I don't want to just keep going on and on about creativity. I guess I could talk about um, one of the projects that, I, that I've been working on. Someone asked me to, to, to talk a little bit more about myself personally, and I have the feeling that over the course of this uh, series, a lot of things are going to be revealed about me personally. Um, but I don't really know what anyone wants to know that, that potential listeners don't already know. Uh, or that I haven't already said here, you know, what I'm a fan of or, or where, you know, the state that I live in or, you know, the, the fact that I'm named after someone famous or, you know what I mean? All those things. I, I don't really know what else any of you want to know about me that wouldn't end up being a story within it or a show within itself in which for the most part, I would need guests. Someone wants, you know, there, there's someone who's like, Oh, talk about your experience in Hawaii. I can absolutely do that, and I can tell stories. However, for me, I would much rather have someone else that was there, even if it's not someone. Even if it's someone that I didn't necessarily uh, interact with there or interact with much while I was there, I would just love to have that other person where they could be like, "You went there, I went there." I had this experience and I could say, I had this experience or whatever, or the, you know, someone else who was there with me in particular, we were hanging out and we became friends and it was like, Oh man, do you remember when we did this and whatever? And then it's a, an, a, an organic conversation as opposed to me just saying, I went here, I did this, I went there, I did this, I met this person, I met that person. And you have no idea who these people are. Some of you might, but most of you would not have any idea who these people are. Whereas if the people were actually here talking to you, telling you their side of the, of the story of the trip, you might be more inclined to actually care or actually pay attention or find it maybe even slightly more interesting. Um, but I guess one of the things that I could talk about is one of the things that I've been writing recently. Hopefully by the time that this goes up, I will have either been working on it uh, you know, expanded upon it a little more, or, you know, honestly, the, the issue is I'll probably have not forgotten about it, but stepped away from it and said, I have this other, I, this other story I want to tell. But, uh, one of the things that I've been, that I've been trying to work on right now is the, I want to do, um, uh, I guess a mini, a movie, a mini movie. I'm not sure how you would say it, but I want it to be, uh, a story about a group of people who come together after... Somebody told me that it sounds very much... And I, I do admit the concept was taken a little bit from uh, the big chill. You know, of, uh, someone dies and a group of friends reunites. That's really where it, it, de or it deviates from that, as far as I can tell. Um, but the... The concept is it's there's people that I that I know who I think would be very good and people who have expressed interest in wanting to be in in a, some type of project of mine in the past. Um, but uh, it's the the kicker. The thing that I haven't really told many people is that the entire movie would be told over Snapchat. Because if you're on Snapchat, chances are you watch someone's story. And if you're not on Snapchat, I'm sorry, but I'm about to go into it and you're not going to have any idea what's going on. But for the Snapchat, Snapchatters, or I don't know what, we, what people who are on Snapchat call themselves. But you have someone on there that you follow and you watch their story. Some people use it as, as a, like a micro-vlogging type thing or whatever. What if, you, and you know, it's just clip after clip after clip of their day or, you know, uh, I'm watching this, I'm cooking this, I'm, you know, whatever. What if you watched it as a movie? What if it was a movie? 
why not? You know, to bring us back to what I was saying before. And that's, that's kind of, I bitched it to somebody and, and a, fr- a friend of mine at my job for money. And he goes, Oh dude, he goes, it makes perfect sense. He's like, I don't know why you wouldn't do that. He's like, it, it just does. It makes perfect sense. You know? So, uh, I've been trying to write that and I, I wrote, you know, the outline and then I went back and realized it's, it's too short there's not enough character development or whatever, so I, I went back and I'm I'm now adding other scenes in, and uh, then I'll get to I'll because I, I I don't because I've never written professionally I don't exactly know the correct process I know my process which is write out kind of every beat and then put it all into script form expand upon a little things and you know pretty much that's that's how I do it. And of course, like I said, I don't know the uh, correct way to do it, but that's, that's my way. Uh, So I'm, you know, in the, my outline stage right now, and uh, I'll probably get into the scripting stage soon, soon soon-ish, probably within the next few days. Um... But yeah, so, you know, that's, that's something to hopefully look forward to. I've pitched it to a few of the people that I want to be in it and they all seem interested enough to read it at least, which is a positive because a lot of my friends, oh, Paul, you, how many pages is this? And I'm like, oh, well, it's, you know, it's 60 pages. Oh, that's too much. Well, I'm sorry. That's you know, normal, like a script, it's a script. It's, you know what I mean? Like what, what would you have me do? You watch an hour long thing of television, an hour without, or, you know, minus commercials is about 42 minutes. So what exactly would you have me do? How, what am I supposed to write five pages and somehow make that be an hour long, uh, television uh, episode, or I, I'm not not exactly sure how people um, expect, or what they think it is, or what they think happens. Um, but I think I'm gonna end this here right now, and probably what I'll do for the second half is maybe I'll come back and I will read a little something, something that I've written or or whatever, or maybe I'll yeah that's I think that's what I'll do is I'll 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 read something that I've written whether it's a a, a piece from that uh, from the Snapchat mini movie or maybe it'll be a, a, you know a poem or maybe a scene from another project or something. But I think that's what I'll do is I'll I'll kind of split this episode in half right about here, come back and then have uh, another point, you know, have the second half be where I'm uh, giving perhaps a, a dramatic reading of something, of a work by J. Paul Casey. Put on my, uh, I won't put on my Shakespearean voice because my British friends would probably hop uh, across the ocean and, you know, try to strangle me for doing a terrible British accent while all of my American friends and, you know, uh, friends from, you know, Canada and, and other places will just ridicule me for a horrible British accent. So I won't, I won't put on my, my Shakespearean voice, but I will come back. Uh, you won't know when, cause it'll just cut right to it. But uh, I will come back for a reading of something that I've written. Okay, everybody, we're back. Uh, So I put the word out questioning what uh, anyone of my friends or whoever, people that have actually read things that I've written, uh, what they want me to read. And the overwhelming response seemed to be that they wanted me to read uh, some things from Gateway, which is the show that, it's the tentative title for the show that I'm, basing somewhat on my place of work. Uh, I will explain it at a later point, but for right now, I'm just going to uh, record starting from page one of episode one. The episode would be entitled, Welcome to Paradise, Part One. Fade in, exterior, Paradise County Supermarket, 
parking lot, day one. Establishing shot. This is one of our main settings. It's not a small place. Clearly a lot of money was put in here at some point. Despite the name sounding local, it's part of a chain. We see many cars in the parking lot, customers going in and out with their shopping carts, and carts fill, filled in the corral. Angle on one car in particular pulling in. Cut to interior, Rooney's car, day one. These are our main characters, the heroes of the piece, Rooney, mid-twenties, and Raven, mid-twenties. Rooney is in the driver's seat, while Raven is, is the passenger. Rooney puts the car in park and turns the engine off. They take a breath and look at each other. Without saying a word, we know this nervous, uneasy feeling. We've all experienced it. They grab their belongings and exit the car. Cut to interior, Paradise County Supermarket, lobby, day one. It's not very busy inside. Lots of foot traffic. The size looks intimidating, though. Seems much bigger on the inside than it does on the outside. Rooney and Raven look at each other once again, nervous. They take another deep breath and continue in before finding an employee. We can't hear this conversation, but they're clearly asking something of the employee who points somewhere and gives them directions. They nod in appreciation and continue in the store. Cut to interior Paradise County supermarket checkouts moments later. At the cash registers, we see the lines are full. Not every line is open, but the ones that are, are packed. Angle on an office door. There is no nameplate. The door is closed. Several workers and customers pass in front of it, none of them paying attention to it. It opens. Raven and Rooney step out, each with another employee at their side. These are their co-workers and guides for the day. Raven is paired with Jamie, mid-twenties, while Rooney is paired with Mike, early thirties. Rooney shakes Mike, I'm sorry, Rooney shakes Mike's hand while Raven shakes Jamie's. Jamie and Mike begin to walk away in opposite directions. Raven and Rooney look at each other, still nervous. Raven, try not to die. Rooney, sarcastically, such great parting words, thanks. They exchange sarcastic, goofy looks with each other. They then smile, turn around to their respective guides, and walk away. We zoom out and focus on the clock hanging on the wall. It's exactly one o'clock. Time lapse. Interior, Paradise County, Produce, Night One. We are now in the produce department of the store. It's located to the left-hand side of the front of the store. It's very, very slow. A clock in the background reads nine o'clock. Rooney is standing, waiting. Raven and Jamie, laughing and talking, walk into the frame. Jamie, mid-conversation. And so the doctor says, well, that's not where carrots are supposed to go, ma'am. Jamie and Raven crack up laughing as they get closer to Rooney. Rooney, not in on the joke, stands there awkwardly as Raven and Jamie's laughter dies down. Rooney, hey. Raven, hey, how was it? Rooney, it was good. Mike showed me a lot. Raven, yeah, Jamie showed me a lot too. Rooney looks at Jamie. Rooney to Jamie. Hey, we were going back to our apartment and have some celebratory drinks. Would you like to join us? Raven and Rooney both look to Jamie. After mulling it over for a moment, Jamie nods. Jamie, sure, I'd love to come. Rooney and Raven smile. They all begin to head outside. Cut to exterior Paradise County Supermarket sidewalk moment later. As Raven, Rooney, and Jamie exit the building, Raven has an epiphany. Raven to Rooney. Did you invite Mike? Rooney to Raven. He's picking up some extra hours, he said, so he's not leaving just yet. They take a few more steps. Raven looks distressed. Raven, I forgot my keys inside. I'll be right back. Rooney, to Jamie, I'm a bit chilly. Mind if we wait inside? Raven turns around and goes back inside. Rooney and Jamie also head in. As they're walking in, Rooney starts talking with Jamie. Rooney continued to Jamie. So how long have you worked here? 
As they all walk in, we cut to interior Paradise County supermarket back room moments later. Angle on Raven walking into the back room. Boom! Clang! Raven looks up at the sound of something falling over. Angle on a fight. There's a struggle going on between Mike and a hooded figure. Angle on Raven, shocked and unsure what's going on. Raven looks all around and sees no one else. Angle on the fight. After a few more seconds, we see that it isn't a person Mike is battling with. It appears to be some sort of tall creature in long black robes and a hood. They knock over a few boxes of product as they struggle back and forth. Mike pulls out an odd, ancient-looking blade. He stabs the creature in the leg, wounding it. It lets out a howling shriek. Angle on Raven, who is completely confused, shocked, and scared. What the hell is happening? Raven screams louder than the creature did. Raven, scared. Ah! This scream from Raven is incredibly loud. Cut to... Exterior, Paradise County Supermarket, lobby, same time. Up at the front of the store, Raven and Jamie are still talking. The loud scream from Raven is so audible, Rooney and Jamie hear the echo from it all the way up here. They both turn around, confused, and look to see what's going on. They look back at each other, but realize they have to go see what happened. Cut to interior, Paradise County Supermarket, back room, same time. Angle on Mike, still pinned down by the creature. The scream happened seconds ago, so Mike quickly looks at Raven. Distracted, Mike doesn't see the final blow coming from the creature. It hits him one more time before its head goes in towards his neck and a gnawing sound is heard. Angle on Raven, still freaking out. What the hell is going on here? We zoom out slightly and see Rooney and Jamie enter the shot. Angle on the creature on top of Mike with its head still buried in Mike's neck. Angle back on our heroes. Rooney and Jamie are now seeing this. They're just as confused as Raven. Jamie's feet shuffle. Angle back on the creature who hears this, pulls its head from Mike's neck and turns towards our heroes. We don't see its face. It's shrouded by the hood. All we can see is blood dripping from the cowl it wears. Heavy breathing is heard emulating from the creature. It's not a menacing sound. It's a scared sound. The creature is obviously afraid. It then dashes away with a noticeable limp from the stab wound in its leg. Angle back on our heroes, who are now all looking at each other, freaking out. After a moment, they try to compose themselves. Raven begins to step forward. Rooney to Raven. What are you doing? Raven to Rooney. Going to check on Mike. Raven inches closer. Rooney to Raven. I think he's dead. We saw that thing dripping with his blood. Jamie. Who was that? Raven and Rooney shake their heads and shrug their shoulders because they have no idea. Raven inches closer and closer. Rooney and Jamie are not far behind. After a few seconds, they arrive at the corpse. Mike's lifeless body lays before them. His eyes are closed already. We don't notice it right away, but one of his hands still has the blade in it, while the other appears to be clutching his chest. At first glance, it looks like he could be holding on to his heart. Raven takes the blade out of his hand and begins to look at it. Rooney to Raven. You're messing with the crime scene. Jamie to both. We should call the police. Raven turns back to them. Raven to both. You saw that thing. Does it really look like something the police could handle? Rooney to Raven. What are you saying? Thing? It was a person. Probably high on something. PCP or something like that. Raven and Rooney stand there exchanging looks. Jamie, however, leans down and notices something. What before looked like Mike's other arm holding his chest now becomes clear that he was holding something to his chest. Something is sticking out below his hand. Jamie reaches over and loosens his hand to get a better look. Standing up and looking at Raven and Rooney, 
Jamie holds up a necklace with a large gemstone in the middle and designs around the outside. Raven and Rooney stop looking at each other and notice the large piece of jewelry Jamie is holding in front of them. They all stare at it questioningly, but they only get a few seconds as ringtone blast. It's not necessarily a tune with which we're familiar, but it's most definitely upbeat. It's upbeat enough to undercut the seriousness of Mike's death. The noise our heroes soon discover is coming from Mike's phone. Irony. They find his phone, Raven in particular is holding it, and see a text message from Mr. Reese. No voice is heard, but the text bubble itself pops up onto the screen next to our heroes holding the phone so that the audience can read it exactly. This will be a common element throughout our show. Texting is a part of everyday life, and it makes sense our characters would text. But instead of having a voiceover, or the characters who receive the text read everything out loud, we'll often see the bubble pop up onto the screen so no plot points are missed. The text from Mr. Reese is as follows. Amulet recovery complete? Our heroes look at each other, even more confused. What do they do? Raven, who is still holding the phone, begins to type. The text bubble will appear on the screen, and the words will type in real time. Sound effects will be used for keystrokes, sending, and receiving notifications. Rooney to Raven. What are you doing? Raven. It'll seem even more suspicious if he doesn't answer. Jamie. Maybe it should seem suspicious. He's dead. Raven ignores them. The words we see in the bubble are a simple yes. Send. After a moment, another message comes in. The message from Mr. Reese is as follows. Copy. Further instructions will be left at the usual drop point. Not thinking it was possible, our heroes become even more confused. Rooney to Raven. How are you going to answer that one? Jamie, to both. I wouldn't. I think we should take the phone and the amulet and get out of here. Rooney, to both. You want to just leave the body? Raven, to Rooney. The police will probably have questions for us. Questions we can't answer. They'll probably think we did it. Jamie, to both. You really think so? Raven and Rooney nod in agreement. The three of them look around once more and walk away, leaving the body. The looks on their faces, however, do indicate that they feel bad for doing so. Cut to exterior, Paradise County Supermarket parking lot, moment later. Our heroes are speed walking out of the store, trying not to draw attention to themselves. There aren't many people around anyway. Rooney and Raven make it to their car and drive away with a bit of speed. Jamie follows them out of the parking lot, also speeding. Cut to interior, Paradise County supermarket back room, same time. We see the dead body just lying there. They left it. We zoom out slightly and see the creature return. It notices Mike's hands are empty. It knows our heroes have the gem and the knife. Lifting its head up, though we still don't see its face, a loud screech is heard from the creature, indicating intense anger. Smash cut to black. So that's the opening 11 pages of the Gateway Pilot. These pages were published by me onto my personal Facebook page. Uh, I had a few people read them. They seemed interested in reading more. So a few people got to read more. A few people had read more before that, whereas some people have only read those 11 pages. And I got very positive feedback. So that was always very nice. Positive feedback is always nice. In this version that I've just read, there were a few spelling errors, a few grammatical errors. I've since gone back and fixed them. However, at the moment, I only have the older copy. Uh, I really hope that you all enjoyed that. I'll probably record more at some point. One thing you may have noticed was that except for Mike, there were no gender pronouns. Because in my mind, the characters of Raven and Rooney 
and Jamie, who will be the main characters of the show, are all genderless, meaning anyone can potentially fill those roles. It, it doesn't, the, the gender of it doesn't matter to me as much as the character development and the story. Now that's just me. Some people read it and they envisioned all women because they believe those names to be all female names. Of course, Jamie was based on the first name, James, which is my first name, for those of you who didn't know. Rooney is based off of a customer at my store who, because of, of uh, talking about Andy Rooney one time, calls me Rooney, and, be, and also based off of the actress Rooney Mara. So seeing as that seemed like it could be a interchangeable, a unisex name, if you will, that's why that was chosen. And the name of Raven was because I've seen females with that name. And, of course, my mind said, well, a male wrestler had that name at one point, too. This was, of course, written before I got back into wrestling. But having it been, having it have, yeah, the fact that it was my part of my background as a child, some a lot of stuff did stay with me. So when I thought Raven could be a man's name as well, I decided to add that in. And the character of Mike was because in pretty much everything I've ever written, there's always, always been a character named Mike. I don't know why. It's just a recurring theme in my writings. But I really hope that you all enjoyed that. And I really hope that you'll stick around for more Paul and All. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Like this content? How about you make it official? Click the little thumbs up button there below. Once you're done with that, maybe give us a subscribe and share us with your friends. Thanks.